What's up guys, it's Tom from Innovative Tom, and today we're going to make this raspberry pie case. I grabbed three pieces of scrap wood to start. I'm not sure what they are. If you guys know, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know what they are. I used a lot of glue, probably too much. And right about here is where I figured that out. You can see it kind of oozing out the sides and it made for a lot of cleanup and I let it set for about a four or five hours before I went at it again and I got to wipe most of it up I found that adding water before you try to wipe it up if it's hardened a little bit you'll be able to wipe it up much easier I set the table saw up to cut half inch pieces I took off about a quarter of an inch and then cut four half inch pieces the quarter of an inch took off the glue and any unevenness I then set the table up to cut quarter inch slots in each piece on the top and the bottom. I drew a box here on the table and just kind of lined everything up to see how it would fit and got my general placement. This fan I didn't end up using. Um, I didn't think it was necessary and I didn't really have the space for it. so. Since I made the dimensions up on the fly, it didn't really matter here what I was drawing. I basically ended up taking it over to the table saw and just made sure that both the long pieces were the same and both the short pieces were the same. It didn't fit perfectly the first time so they ended up getting a little bit smaller than I had originally planned. It was no big deal since I just made this up on the fly. The magic of video makes it look like I built it correctly the first time, but I had to make these cuts a few times, and I'm no woodworker, and this was the first time I made a box, so. All in all, it came out great. Here I am just laying out each one of the panel mount pieces. Used a drill to get some holes started here. Went up a size in the drill and started chiseling out some of the inner bits. Tried a couple different methods here, and the one that I found that worked the best ended up being the Dremel, and almost using it like a CNC. I would set the depth for, say, an eighth of an inch, take out all the material I could, and then lower the depth again another eighth of an inch, and go at it again until I had the whole hole cleared out. It seemed to work the best, and then I would kind of square it up with a chisel at the end. Here I am just removing some of the plastic housing to fit it in nice and nice tight. I actually had to use a mallet to get it in there, but it looked really nice that way. There was a lot of guess and check to this part. Here I made a hole that I thought was going to be the right size and it turned out to be a little too small. So I had to go back and make it a little bigger. Four holes later and I was really happy with the way it came out. I thought it looked really good, really clean. It's time to glue up the box. I taped all four of the pieces together, flipped them over and added some glue. Now I made one fatal mistake here and ended up gluing the whole box together before I put the top and bottom pieces in. I think I was just really excited to get this box together. I had already cut the first piece and went back and was making the second piece. I got these plastic pieces out of the Aldi's shopping bags there to beef up the bottom but they do really well here and much cheaper than going out and buying an acrylic or something from the home center. Once the box was nice and dry and all put together, sanding, lots and lots of sanding. Then I took it over to the table saw to cut it in half to get my top and bottom piece. I'm not really sure the best way to do this. Um, I've never really done it before, so if anybody has any suggestions, let me know. And I'd love to take a look at them and try them out. Here I'm just cutting the pieces that are going to end up holding the top on. Uh, just a little bit of glue and some clamps. It's not going to be something that's opened all the time, just every once in a while, so it doesn't need to be crazy secure. When I was testing the lid, I found that I had some issues getting it on and off, and they all stemmed from the corners. 
so I just ended up chopping those off. The pieces of plastic were about an eighth inch too thin, so I used some hot glue to secure them in the slots. I cleaned everything up, wiped it all down, and then used the polyurethane that I had laying around. Uh, it's a glossy. It made it look really, really nice. It made everything kind of pop out. I did two coats of this with sim sanding in between. In the meantime, I glued down some standoffs for the Raspberry Pi to sit on. These panel mount pieces came with nuts inside of the plastic, so I just drilled those out so that I could screw directly into the wood and not have to worry about going through the nut. They're intended for sheet metal, that's probably about a sixteenth of an inch, so not really intended for this, but it worked out well. Adding some of the finishing touches here, I added some quarter inch rubber bumper feet that I just picked up at Home Depot on my way home. I soldered on the connectors for the power because these couldn't be soldered before they have to be soldered once they're installed. And I used some heat shrink tubing here. Uh, I can't stress enough how awesome this stuff is whenever you're doing electronics. It just kind of covers everything up and makes it look really clean. That was it for the electronics. The panel mount stuff was all plug and play. Uh, you can get them on Amazon. I'll link them in the description below. I added some RGB LEDs to the case so it would have a dull glow. It turned out to look really cool. They're controlled by an Arduino that I plugged into the USB port. So every time the Pi comes on, it powers the Arduino, which ends up turning on the LEDs. Thanks for checking out my video. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe.